This is a Middle Loop Quick Quick Class. Hi, I'm Jerry with Middle Loop, and this is a quick class on how to do simple editing on the DJI Fly app. Whether you're posting your videos to social media or simply sharing them with friends and family from your phone, sharing the raw footage just doesn't cut it. In fact, cutting it is the key to sharing your videos with others. In today's quick class, we'll be showing how to do some simple editing using the Create feature of the DJI Fly app. This tutorial applies whether you're using the RC Pro, the original smart controller, or the DJI Fly app on your mobile device. In our examples today, we'll be using the RC Pro. We'll first cover what you need to do to get started. Then we'll jump right into editing. First, a simple example. We'll be trimming down the length of a single clip with cuts and dissolves. Next, we'll amp it up a bit with editing together multiple clips and images, plus intros and outros and a couple other basic features of the tool. Then we'll show using templates, which with just a couple of clicks provides elaborate videos. And then finally, we'll provide some information on sharing your composition, like on social media and texting. This is our 10th video in the DJI series, and there's more to come. Also, we'd love to hear from you, especially if you have an idea for a future video. Just leave a comment. Now, let's get started. In this tutorial, the name of the game is Quick Turnaround. Our goal is to show how to take a video that you just shot and do some fast editing so that you can post it to social media or text it to a friend or family in no time at all. This editor only produces HD videos at either 720p or 1080p, which is fine for social media and texting. In fact, it actually simplifies things, and that's because in this quick class, we'll be using clips that are already cached in the DJI Fly app. No need to download them off the drone. That's assuming you haven't disabled the auto cache feature. We should note that if you'll be using this editor, we recommend that you avoid shooting videos in D-Log. Even with Color Display Assist turned on, your cached files will look better in other modes. Now, if you're planning on using photos that you captured on your drone in your edited composition, depending on which device you're using, you may have to download them from the drone first. For example, when flying the Mavic 3 Cine with the RC Pro, only videos are automatically cached. Photos are not. To download photos, with the drone turned on and connected to the RC Pro, open the DJI Fly app. Since your drone is connected, it defaults to this screen. Tap in the upper left to get back to here. In the bottom left, open the album. The album should default to the drone tab. Now if you'd like to check whether your photos are already available to you, you just need to look in the app album tab. Ours are not, so on the drone tab, you'll see all the videos and photos on the drone. And since the videos are already cached, let's limit our view to just the photos. Tap on the Photos tab. Notice this little icon in the upper left of the photo. It's an indication that this photo has not been downloaded yet. Tap on the photo to open it. Now in the lower right, tap on the Download icon. You get this little progress indicator while it downloads. Once complete, tap the back arrow in the upper left and repeat for any other photos you'd like to use. Now, if we switch over to the app album, you can see all the photos we just downloaded. And if we tap the All tab, you can see all the videos and photos that are on the RC Pro. Since we have everything we need on the RC Pro, we can now shut down the drone. In this first example, we'll be just trimming down a single clip to make it shorter. We'll show cuts and dissolves, and then we'll render the composition to a new video file. With the drone off, let's go ahead and open the DJI Fly app. Open the album in the lower left. Now in the lower right, tap the Create button. Create defaults to the Templates tab when it opens. We'll come back to that a little later. For now, tap on the Pro tab at the top. Here you can see all the files in the app album. These are the cached videos and the photos that we downloaded earlier. The icon in the lower left of the thumbnail indicates what type it is. The film strip icon is a video clip. The rectangular icon is a photo. And then there are others, like this one, which is a quick shot. This one happens to be a circle quick shot. Now you can tap that down arrow at the top to navigate to other folders, but we're going to stick with the app album today. So, let's select the video clip that we want to trim down. Just tap on the thumbnail. Since we're only selecting one clip for this example, tap the Add button in the upper right. As you can see, the editor is now in portrait mode. So now we're just going to turn the RC Pro on its side. Incidentally, we find using a stylus very helpful when editing. It just gives you a lot more precision on the touchscreen than your finger. 
If you're interested in the one that we use, we'll put a link in the description below. In today's examples, we're pretty much going to be sticking with the edit functionality of this editor. At the end, we'll talk through some of the other features, but the edit functionality is our primary focus. So now that we've selected a clip for our first example, here it is in the timeline. You can tap on the play icon to start and stop. You can also tap on and drag on the timeline to do what's known as scrubbing. This allows you to go quickly back and forth. You can also pinch in and pinch out on the touchscreen with two fingers to zoom in and zoom out of the timeline. We'll keep the beginning of the clip and cut just before the jerky repositioning of the drone. This will be where our first cut will be. Once you have the playhead where you want your edit, tap the cut icon. Now let's move the playhead to where our second cut will be and again tap the cut icon. Now we want to simply remove the garbage between the two cuts. Tap on it to highlight it and then tap the delete icon to remove it. All right, let's see what that looks like. Zoom out and move the playhead back to the beginning and tap play. Good, now I'll do two more cuts and remove more unwanted footage. And as you can see, we've ended up with three separate clips and two cuts. Also notice we're down to 17 seconds of the original 37. Let's see what it looks like. Not bad, but I think we can improve on that second transition a little by changing that cut to a dissolve. So let's tap on that cut icon between the two clips. And here, we can choose the transition type. Notice, it gives you a preview of the one that is currently selected. Right now, it's set to none, so let's tap on the dissolve transition. The preview is handy if you want to try out different transitions, but I like the dissolve, so let's go with it. Tap on that check mark in the lower right to accept it. And now on the timeline, you can see that the transition icon between the two clips has changed. Also notice that the length has dropped to 16 from 17 seconds. That's because these two clips now overlap, taking up less time. So now let's see what the whole composition looks like. Okay, so that's great, simple and short. Now let's export it to a standalone video. Tap on Done in the upper right. Choose the resolution you want, either 720p or 1080p. We'll stick with the default and tap continue. And that's it. We've just produced our first video. We'll come back to this screen at the end when we talk about sharing edited videos. For now, tap done. For our second example, we'll start with a clip and multiple photos. We'll show reordering them, some special features for photos. We'll add an intro and end screen, and we'll talk through some of the other features. So back to the Pro tab, this time we'll select a video and the two photos we downloaded earlier. Notice as I select them, a number appears in the little box. This is the order that they'll be added to the timeline. In a second, I'll show you how to reorder them. As before, tap the Add button in the upper right. Here's the timeline with the items we selected in the order we selected them. Let's move ahead in the timeline and split that video into two parts. So now we have two clips and two photos. Now let's reorder them so that that second clip is at the end of the timeline. If I tap and hold on the clip, the whole timeline compresses and I can now drag the clip to the end and release it. Next, let's work on the photos. I'll tap on the first one to select it. For a photo, notice that you have different choices. You can zoom, copy, or delete it. Let's tap zoom. Now, you can choose to zoom in or out, or pan left or right. Let's select Zoom In and tap the check mark to accept it. Now tapping on the second photo, we'll do a different zoom effect. This time we'll pan right. Okay, so let's try panning left. Okay, I like that better. Now let's change all of our cuts to dissolves, and this time we'll do them all at once. Tap on the first one. Tap on Dissolve, and this time we'll tap the double check mark to apply to all transitions. And then tap Apply to confirm it. All right, so now let's take a look. Good, now let's add an end screen. At the end of the timeline, tap End. Incidentally, some of these features will require you to download them before you can use them. That means, of course, your device will need to be on the internet in order to use it. Tap on the one you want to use. I'll tap this one to download and preview it. Not bad, but I think I just want a simple fade to black. For that, I'll scroll to the right and download the black screen. Now we just need to change the transition to dissolve. All right, now let's add an opening screen. At the start of the timeline, tap on Title. There's a lot of choices here. 
Let's download and add Showtime. All right, let's play it. Good. I think we'll go with it. Incidentally, you can change the length of the title and end screens. Here's a video that starts from a black title screen. We'll zoom in a little. If we just tap on it, these handles appear that we can grab and drag to the desired length. So far, we've been focused on the edit functions, but as you can see, there are a lot of other features available to you. We're not going to go into details here, but let's talk through them, and then you can explore and play with them when you get a chance. Just be aware many of these functions require that you're on the internet to use them. The music function allows you to add music to your composition. It includes a music library. The music in the library, according to DJI support, is free for you to use. There are controls in there for volume. You can also fade in and fade out. And there's a rhythm feature which allows you to manually add markers to the timeline so that when you edit, you can edit on the beat. Next is the filter function. Here you can adjust the exposure, color, and there are some special visual effects. Next is the text function, where, as you'd expect, lets you add titles or labels to the video. And finally, stickers. Stickers are animated graphics. Yeah, it's a little gimmicky, but they can be fun too. Templates are a quick and easy way to throw together a somewhat complicated video that utilizes many of the features that we talked about. Basically, you select the template, pick the clips to use, and that's it. Beyond that, you don't have a lot of control. Here too, you'll need to be on the internet in order to preview and download the templates. But once downloaded, it can be used repeatedly without the internet. Notice, in the upper left of the thumbnail, it shows how many clips are needed to complete the video, and in the upper right, it shows how long the completed video will be. This icon, in the lower left, indicates that it hasn't been downloaded yet. We'll scroll down to use one that we downloaded earlier, which only requires two clips. To use it, tap Apply. Now this screen should look familiar. Select the clips or photos that you wish to use in the order that you want them to appear. Notice the Add button in the upper right. Since we're using a template, it indicates how many clips we have selected and how many are needed. We'll select these two and tap Add. Next, you get a preview of what it looks like. And at the bottom, you can make a few changes. You can adjust the clips that were selected, change the video filters like we discussed earlier, the music volume, and you can add an end screen. But I like it the way it is, so we'll tap Done and let it render the video. My guess is you're probably editing or creating a video in order to share it. Now the DJI Fly app create function does allow for sharing directly. You might remember right after you export or render a video that you edited, you come to this share screen. As you can see, some of the social media icons are shown here. Now using these requires that you have the native app installed on the device. If you're using the Fly app on your mobile device, I'm going to assume that you know how to install apps to that. But for RC Pro users, you might be interested in another video that we produced called Installing Third-Party Apps on the RC Pro. We actually produced a second video that you might find useful too, Posting to Social Media from the RC Pro. It's not only useful for the RC Pro user, but it also has some relevancy to the Fly app in general regarding social media. Not only does it cover posting via a browser, but it also covers posting with a social media app that's not listed here. I'll include a link to both in the description below and at the end of this video. So where do you find the videos that you've created once you've closed that share screen after rendering? Well, on your mobile device, you'll find it in your photo app alongside all of your other photos and videos. This makes it very easy to share in a text message. Texting from the RC Pro is a little more complicated. In fact, we recommend just copying the edited video file to your phone and texting it from there. To copy files from the RC Pro to your phone, we have a video on that too, and we'll provide a link to that with the others. But whether you want to copy to your phone or computer, you're going to need to know where to find them on the RC Pro. You'll find them in internal storage in the DGI album folder, which is in the DCIM subfolder. Please note that these files do not get written to the micro SD card, even if you have it installed and activated. We'll put the path to that directory in the description. And if you are looking to play back your edited videos on the RC Pro, you'll find them in the gallery app. So that's it for this quick class. Stick around for the links to the videos that we referenced, or if you subscribe, you'll easily be able to find all the videos in our DJI series. And if you'd like to be notified when we post a new one, be sure to click that notify bell after subscribing. 
Thank you, have a great day, and happy flying. 